Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifteth himself up in his brigandine. And spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. 
For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon, to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hosts hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors, in the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen and with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz, appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. 
The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, and that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitant of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, shall Jerusalem say. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat I will make their feasts, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he-goats. How is Shishak taken? And how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, saith the Lord. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still, remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach, shame hath covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord hath spoiled Babylon, and destroyed out of her the great voice. When her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. Because the spoiler is come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken, for the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her captains and her rulers and her mighty men and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gate shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, when he went with Zedekiah the king of Judah into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When thou comest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words, then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah.
like an eagle to the sky among the peaks my soul can be found but an unexpected storm may drive me from the heights it may bring me low but it can never bring me down I possible in every life in Jesus name call to salvation consecrated for revival healing and deliverances for every gospel crusade people run to Jesus and joy fills the air this aptly describes the man William Folorusho Kumui. The Sunday secret when you hear the word you do not receive it as the word of man but as it is in truth the word of God. The one to give you super abundant living has now come. A man amiable and humble. Kumui ascribes all glory to God for successes in his life and ministry. A man who is passionate about humanity and known for his stand on holiness and righteousness. Where is holiness if there's no obedience? When you hear the word, you obey the word. Kumui has consistently emphasized that repentance through God in the name of Jesus Christ remains the solution to problems of humanity and indeed the world. A father has raised up has appointed Jesus as the divine connector. You mention that name, you'll be connected immediately. You want to have this reconnection with the Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. I receive the Lord 
as my personal savior i pray you receive all these people now in jesus name healing deliverance do the impossible in every life in jesus name hearing since i was born but today now i can't hear i can't hear everything now it has happened for six years now i'm being paralyzed i'm i cannot move with that rich using crosses god swim me through i thank god for the miracle the lord have done for in my right. life see her walking 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 put her hands together a reformer who not only considers his physical audience but personally reached out to the online audience at a time that most countries of the world face the effect of global recession and global warming pastor dr w f kumui decided to rally help for the needy across the world my mind also is on uh, is with the online people i've been praying for them that those who are online will really have a definite visitation of god and a definite touch kumui had a live broadcast in a global call for divine connection to jesus live from abuja nigeria and online to the world he emphasized the need for humanity to become sober and repentant for a new start and that connection led to liberation as stories of sadness and gloom turned to joy and good the april program led to another live broadcast in july 2021 this link from Calabar, south south nigeria to the world their social media produced an avalanche of signs and wonders. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui is clearly a gift from God. A gift that keeps on giving. At 80 years of age, he has shown consistency and commitment to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. From Asia to America, Africa, Europe and practically the entire world. I just want to thank God every day and praise our Lord that he showed me Deeper Life Bible Church and I want to thank Dr. W. F. Kumai for changing my way of thinking of Jesus Christ. The story is the same. Kumai goes everywhere with the name of Jesus and just as it's highlighted about Jesus in scriptures, everywhere he went, he keeps doing good with signs following. At this global crusade, the international evangelist, Pastor Dr. William Kumui, will be ministering live along with special ministration in songs by an international artist. Hey friends, Don Moen here, and I want to invite you to join me at the Divine Touch for Total Freedom Global Crusade, where I'll be leading worship with Pastor William Kumui of Deeper Christian Life Ministries. This event will be streamed live to the world from August 26th through August 31st, 2021 at 1600 hours GMT daily with a special Sunday worship service scheduled at 0700 GMT. So as we come together to worship and build a throne for God with our praise, He will be with us to heal, to save, to deliver, to provide for every need, to give us His divine touch for total freedom. So invite your friends and family and join us August 26th through August 31st for the Divine Touch for Total Freedom Global Crusade. Go to www.dclm.org to learn more and we look forward to seeing you there. A torch transformation is coming your way. A global crusade with an international minister of God, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, ministering live, and Don Moen, world renowned gospel artist, also ministering in songs. My God is mighty to save. From Enugu, Southeast Nigeria, West Africa, alive to the world, their satellites, and all our social media platforms. Thursday, August 26th to Tuesday, August 31, 5 p.m. daily. Saturday, 
Sunday 4 p.m. and Sunday worship service 8 a.m. with evening revival at 5 p.m. This is one touch that guarantees a beautiful life. There'll be a manifestation in every life, joy in every family. Get connected to a divine touch with God's general, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui. One touch and you are made whole. Read unto me. Let me hear you. I said, Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, because you provided this opportunity for us always to come every week and to listen to the teaching of your word. I will pray, Lord, that the exposition of your word will bring strength to every life tonight in jesus name we pray lord you open our eyes to see what we need to know about you about christ about the holy spirit about ourselves about our relationship with you so that on that final day when the lord will come either come for us individually or come for us in the rapture corporately lord we pray that every one of us will see your face on that final day in jesus name i will pray that the power of the resurrection of christ will walk in our lives walk in every life that will live victoriously in the power in the light in the strength of your resurrection in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray yeah. a good day, amen before you sit down yeah. tonight we're coming to first corinthians chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 20 actually we're studying all through to verse 15 but i read verse 20 for us to begin it says in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 but now is christ risen from the dead and is become the first fruits of them that slept here paul the apostle writing by the inspiration of the spirit of god he gives us assurance he says now christ is risen risen from the dead it says to the corinthians it says to all christians of that time of this time of every generation there should be no doubt in any heart about the resurrection of the lord jesus christ because you understand that is the very center is the very nucleus is the very foundation is the very strength of the gospel what's the gospel it tells us it says the gospel is that christ died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again for our justification and if anyone is going to be saved he must understand he must embrace he must believe he must accept the resurrection of the lord jesus christ that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ died and that he rose again and you confess that with your mouth believing in your heart it says you will be saved there is no salvation heaven sent salvation transforming salvation powerful salvation scriptural salvation without believing that Christ died that Christ rose again and that Christ is the totality of the revelation for our salvation so then paul the apostle ensures us assures us that now is christ risen from the dead and he has become the first fruits of them that slept that means because he rose we shall rise and because he didn't remain in the grave he brings life life eternal life abundant life everlasting to everyone that's why today we're looking at the message christ's resurrection as the first fruits christ's resurrection as the first fruits three things we're looking at number one the reign of the risen christ 
he rose and then it's going to rain if he did not rise from the dead he will not rain but because we're sure and we're certain of the resurrection of Christ we know he's going to reign the reign of the risen Christ number two the righteousness of the regenerated Christians the righteousness of those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ they turn away from sin they look unto the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him as their personal savior they believe that Jesus died for them and that he was buried all their sins were buried with him and then he rose again in power because of that the power of the risen Christ regenerates them recreates them transforms them and converts them and there's the righteousness of the regenerated christians number three the resurrection he revealed contracts here paul the apostle begins to give us illustration illustration about what were plants that comes up illustration about the difference between angels and men illustration about the terrestrial the things on earth and the celestial the things in heaven and then illustration concerning the glory of the life that now is and the glory of the life that is to come and then he illustrates all that and he assures us that the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and our resurrection also is certain. The resurrection in revealed contrast. Let's come to number one. Number one is the reign of the risen Christ. Let's come to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 but now is christ risen look at the excitement of paul the apostle look at the assurance of paul the apostle and look at the faith and the confidence of paul the apostle in the resurrection of jesus now is christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept in verse 21 he tells us for sins by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead is referring to the first adam by first adam that adam that was created who fell who yielded to the temptation of satan he said by him that first man death came sin came but then it says by christ the second and the last adam resurrection has come righteousness has come reconciliation with god has come because he rose from the dead and then in verse 22 in verse 22 he tells us for as in adam all die even so in christ shall all be made alive all everyone everywhere everyone who believes everyone who calls on the name of the lord by christ through christ in christ shall all be made alive look at verse 23 in verse 23 but every man in his own order christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ at his coming what does that mean christ the first fruit the one that rose, the first one that rose from the dead to die no more. Please understand, when you look at the Bible, there are isolated situations that you call resurrection. In the Old Testament, the son of that woman in first, in first Kings died and then Elijah prayed and that child rose again and then the one that was dropped in the grave of Elisha as he, as he touched the bones of Elisha he rose again you come to uh, the New Testament Jairus uh, daughter rose from the dead and then the woman of Nain that was the child was being carried to be buried and Jesus touched the beard the coffin and that child rose then you remember Lazarus Lazarus when Jesus said Lazarus come forth then Lazarus came alive and he came forth 
why then are we told that Christ is the first fruit of the those who rise from the dead? You see, in all those cases, they rose from the dead, and when their time came, they died again. But in the case of Jesus, he died, he was buried, and then he rose again, and after that resurrection, he did not die again. That's why he's the first one that rose from the dead and did not die again. And when our time comes for the resurrection of the dead, because he is the first fruit, and then our own resurrection will follow. When we rise from the dead like that, we die no more. And when the resurrection has happened, and then the saints of God are raptured, after that rapture, there is no death anymore. The Lord Jesus said, the son of the children of resurrection, they'll be like angels, and they will never die again. That's why it says, Christ and the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming all the believers who have died they have not risen up yet but at his coming that's when the rest of the dead will rise again it tells us in Acts chapter 26 and we're reading from verse 23 Acts chapter 26 verse 23 that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that shall rise from the dead. The first that will rise from the dead, a peculiar resurrection. He rises and then he dies no more. And then it goes on to say, and that and shall show the light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now he has shown the light to the Jews. He has shown the light to the Gentiles that because of his resurrection, now we can have a spiritual resurrection that saves us and that brings us to new life. And then eventually, when our time is up and we die at the coming of the Lord, the saints of God will rise from the dead. But you see, at this time now, because of the resurrection of Jesus, there's a new life. There is a risen life. There's a reigning life. And there is a righteous life that has dominion. That uh, we're told in Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 17, uh, for he by one man's offense, that's the first Adam, death reigned by one upon all it says now by that disobedience of the man the disobedience of the first adam was still in the first in the romans chapter 5 and verse 17 it now tells us about the lord jesus christ and it says we that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. In the first man, in Adam, we became sinners. All became sinners. But then, in Christ, the last Adam, because of his resurrection, and he rose for our justification, righteousness comes to us, salvation comes to us, and we're now able to live in the power of that resurrection. And we reign in life by the grace of God that brings us the righteousness of the Lord. In verse 21, he tells us in verse 21, that a sin has reigned unto death. When you come into this life, you come on the basis of a descendant of Adam. And because of that, his fall, his depravity, and his powerlessness, and his sinfulness reigns over your life. It says, as sinners reigns unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You accept him as your savior. You accept him as your Lord. You accept him as the ruler. You accept him as the master, as the king in your life. 
then the power and the strength of the Lord will reign in your life and you'll not live by the weakness of the first man Adam you now reign in life by the power and the strength of the last Adam of the Lord Jesus Christ look at John chapter 5 verse 25 remember Christ is the first fruit of them that rise from the dead and then we are to follow our resurrection is coming in John chapter 5 reading from verse 25 verily verily I say unto you the hour is coming the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live when Jesus said verily verily he means certainly no shadow of doubt here that as he is going to rise from the dead all the people that follow him they're going to rise from the dead look at verse 28 in verse 28 it tells us marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave all that are in the grave shall hear his voice what then will happen look at verse 29 there he tells us in verse 29 as the dead will hear they shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation it says even the sinners there's going to be a time of resurrection for them but it will be a resurrection unto perdition unto damnation because they did not have the life of christ in them but the people who know the lord the children of god our resurrection is going to be unto life everlasting life eternal life happy life forever and ever and look come back to first corinthians chapter 15 in first corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 24 in verse 24 here is what is saying then come at the end at the time of that final resurrection it says the end is coming then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom unto God even the father when he shall have put down all rule all dominion and all authority and all power then in verse 25 we're told he says for he must reign he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet and then in verse 26 it says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead what does that mean now before that final resurrection people are living and they are dying and before the time of the great white throne judgment people are born then they live then they die and then at the final time when christ will take the kingdom and will subdue all enemies and subdue even the devil then death shall be cast into the lake of fire that nobody will die anymore those who go to the right hand side they live forever those who go to the left hand side they live forever those who are found in the book of life they live forever and those who are not found reaching in the book of life they are cast into the lake of fire and they live forever in that lake of fire and death will not do its usual work anymore because the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death and then he tells us in a psalm 2 because it says christ will reign psalm 2 verse 6 yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion in verse 7 it says i will declare the decree a decree that not satan not demons and not heaven and not earth and not hell can change a decree that is finalized by the authority of the almighty god i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me the father has said unto the son 
God the Father has spoken to Christ, the Son of God, Thou art my Son. This day have I begotten thee. Look at verse 8. It says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the key then for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. That's why Jesus said, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because the uttermost parts of the earth are to hear the gospel. They are to repent. They are to believe on the Lord. And when they believe on the Lord, they are to be saved. And then they become the inheritance of the Lord. In every nation. And then to the uttermost part of the earth. It tells us in verse 9, it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. That's rulership. That's his kingship. That's his royalty. That he will reign. And he will be in control forever and ever. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And look at Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 31. And behold... That shall conceive in thy womb. Here is the message from God through the angel unto Mary the virgin. And bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Are you there? Shout that name. And shall call his name Jesus. Then look at verse 32. It says, he shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Look at verse 33 now. In verse 33 it tells us. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Revelation chapter 11. Verse 15. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world the governments of this world all the kingdoms all the all the dominions in all the nations of the world the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he christ and he our lord and he king of kings and lord of lords and he shall reign tell me how long forever and ever let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 27 in verse 27 for he has put all things under his feet he the father he the creator he the one over all father he says he god the father has put all things under the feet of christ but when he says all things are put under him it is manifest that he is exempted which did put all things under him what does that say what it says is the father puts all things under the feet of Christ. But then the Father who put all things under the feet of Christ is not under the Son. The Father is never under the Son. The Master, the Creator who created all things and He put everything under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ he the father never comes under the authority of the lord jesus just like it is today the father in the family who puts all things under the supervision under the authority under the control of his children he himself the father does not come under the authority under the control of those children and it's the same thing uh, as with the father and son up above as with fathers and son uh, down below here for he has put all things under his feet 
but when he says all things are put under him it is manifest that he is exempted that did put all things under him in verse 28 it says and when all things shall be subdued unto him that is put under Christ then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all and in all and the heavenly father puts the angels and the redeemed men and the saved converted men and the whole universe under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ eventually Christ himself will be subject unto the Father, obedient unto the Father. That's why he said, my Father is greater than I. And then at that time, after Christ now comes to reign, and then we are going to be resurrected after him. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 20, our conversation is in heaven. Our confidence is in heaven. Our lifestyle is in heaven. Our expectation is from heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior. Here we are. We're still on earth. And Christ is coming. And because we are saved. And because we are sanctified. And our treasure is in heaven. Our mind is in heaven. Our expectation is is heaven we're looking up to the time of his coming he says we look for the savior the lord jesus christ look at what will happen in verse 21 who shall change our vile body who shall change our mortal body who shall change our earthly body the body that is prone to sickness and prone to death and prone to weakness that body will be changed and transformed you will have a new body you'll have a glorious body because christ by his power he will at that time when he comes he will change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body when we rise will come to be like the lord jesus christ you remember how the Lord Jesus Christ was when he rose from the dead? They shut the door because of the fear of the Jews. And then Jesus comes in without knocking at the door and without opening the door. That's a glorious body. And he told uh, that woman that, so, that wanted to hold him after the resurrection, he said, touch me not. I go to the Father and then I'll come back. And that same day he went and that same day he came back and he appeared to the disciples that's what the glorious body is the thought of i want to be that side of heaven just thinking like that you are there i want to go to that other universe just thinking it you are there because he shall change our vile mortal ugly body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the walking whereby he is able even to subdue all things under, under himself able to subdue and even today because he said all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me everything in our lives is subdued under him in jesus name and whatever ought not to be there in our body today sickness infirmity disease affliction torment everything as we call on the name of jesus will come under the authority of the lord jesus in jesus name he is able to subdue all things unto himself let's come to point number two now in point number three the righteousness of regenerated christians the righteousness of regenerated christians we're coming back to first corinthians 
chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 29 look at that else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all why are they dead baptized for the dead verse 30 in verse 30 it tells us and why stand we in jeopardy every hour verse 31 it says i protest by your rejoicing which i have in christ jesus our lord i die daily verse 32 then he said if after the manner of men i have fought with bees at ephesus what advantages each me if the dead rise not let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die then he tells them in verse 33 he says be not deceived evil communications evil associations corrupt good manners and then verse 34 he says awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of god i speak this to your shame the righteousness of regenerated christians let's come back to verse 29 in verse 29 or else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all what why are they then baptized for the dead he said christ has died and he was buried and he rose again and when you become a child of god you are baptized as a symbol and resemblance of the death of the lord jesus christ and you are baptized unto his death now if christ did not rise from the dead why are you baptized in water why are you baptized as unto his death and then rising again in the new strength of the resurrected life romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 3 romans chapter 6 we're reading from verse 3 do you know that so many of us as were baptized unto jesus christ were baptized into his death you understand he died he came alive you now the power of resurrection has worked in your life and your life is transformed you were dead in sins and trespasses but now the new life of christ abides in you and you come in water baptism and you are baptized unto his death but for it says it was for the therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up he died then he was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also shall walk in newness of life and paul the apostle is saying all this will be meaningless if christ did not rise from the dead but he died was buried he rose again so our water baptism is meaningful we died with him we're buried with him and we rise again in newness of life that is meaningful because of the death and the resurrection of christ look at verse 5 for if we have been planted buried together in the likeness of his death we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him the fleshly light crucified with him the adamic nature that depravity that old man the body of sin 
crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should serve we should not serve sin we come into newness of life the old is gone the old is buried and now new life in christ has come in verse 7 for he that is dead is freed from sin is making a comparison between the life of christ and our lives the death of christ and a spiritual death the burial of christ and our baptism and then also the resurrection of the lord and our resurrection into new life let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15 we're reading from verse 30. first corinthians chapter 15 verse 30 and why stand we in jeopardy every hour in verse 31 he says i protest by your rejoicing which i have in christ jesus our lord i die daily now he's talked about the literal death of the lord jesus christ he's talked he's talked about the peculiar death of the believer we are dead to sin we come alive in Christ's righteousness. He's talking about another kind of death now. He says, I face persecution. And I face possible death every time. From the time he got converted in Damascus, they wanted to kill him. Persecution. And then as they went from city to city, they will stone him. They will beat him and he was in jeopardy of his life and possible death every time he said i die daily i die i come alive i almost die but then i rise up again and i'm doing the work of the lord look at what he meant first Corinthians, second corinthians chapter four i'm reading from verse seven second corinthians chapter four verse seven but we have this treasure in having vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, we're troubled on every side. That's what he meant when he said, I die daily. My life is in danger daily. My life is in jeopardy daily. The Jews and all those uh, people and the Gentiles too that oppose the preaching of the gospel, they persecute daily. And he said, we're troubled on every side. Yet, not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9, verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed and then he tells us in verse 10 he says always 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 when he said daily always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that's the persecution that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in our body verse 11 for we which, are, which live are always delivered unto death. The beating, the scourging, the persecution were delivered unto death. For Jesus said that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal dying body. Then in verse 12, it says, So then, Death walketh in us, but life in you. He's talking about what he had to suffer, and yet he will not give up. He kept on preaching the gospel. It's an example for you and for me that when this persecution, 
when there is opposition and when it appears the liberty we have is curtailed one way or the other by persecution we don't get discouraged and give up and give in and give up the tools and say there's no use the persecution is so much if Paul the apostle went through you will go through I will go through hey, look at what he said in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 32 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 32 if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus what advantageous age if the dead rise not let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die for tomorrow we'll die you know Paul the Apostle is saying all those who are again about the resurrection they don't understand that if I did not believe in the resurrection how would I go to Ephesus and fight with the bees over there Paul what do you mean did you fight with a lion with a bear with a ferocious animal what do you mean you fought with the bees at Ephesus look at Jude chapter 1 in Jude chapter 1 reading from verse 10 it's going to explain to us who the beasts are for these speak evil of those things where they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves what the apostle was talking about people talking about sinners talking about blasphemers talking about backsliders talking about those who did not believe in god who opposed the gospel and who fought against the message it was bringing and it said they are bees and i fought those bees at ephesus and what if they had overcome me and they killed me physically well i didn't worry about that because i believe in the resurrection he said if i did not believe the resurrection i will not fight with those beastly people in ephesus brute beasts who oppose the things they do not understand and even the things that they know they corrupt themselves look at verse 11 one to them beasts they have gone in the way of Cain, the brute beast. And they ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a word, the brute beast. And they perished in the, in the against sin of Cori, the brute beast. In verse 12, these are spots in your fields of charity. Those beasts, they try to infiltrate the church tried to enter into the church and Paul the apostle stood against them it was a great fight he said when he feasts with you feeding themselves without fear clouds the air without water carried about of winds trees whose fruit withered without fruit they didn't have the fruit of the spirit they professed they were members of the church they didn't have the peace and the joy and the love and the long suffering and the endurance they didn't have the fruit of the spirit they did not have the meekness they did not have the lowliness they did not have the faith and the fidelity and the faithfulness and they did not have the gentleness of christ they did not have temperance self-control and Paul the apostle recognized them that they come into the assembly and they mix with the congregation of the people of God while they feed themselves without fear, clouds without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruits withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots in verse 13. 
But that he says, reaching waves of the sea, these people are ferocious, they rage, they roar, they are opposed to the true gospel and they fight vehemently, reaching waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. When they overcome in this congregation, they go to another congregation. When they overcome, overpower them there, they go to another because they are bees and they want to fight against the truth of the gospel. And Paul the apostle said, any time he confronted them, he didn't fold his hands, he didn't drop his hands, he didn't say, what can we do? They are everywhere. He said, I fought them. I meet them in Corinth, I fought them. Ephesus, I fought them. Anywhere in the province of Galatia, I fought them. Because he knew if he did not, they will destroy the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and souls will not be saved. Reaching waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15. first corinthians chapter 15 we're coming to verse 33 and we're reading to verse 34. in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners Paul the Apostle said, you Corinthians, your company will determine your conduct. Your association will determine your behavior. Evil communications, the people you are working with, the people you are interacting with, the people you are sharing ideas with, the people you are friendly with, and the people you are consulting every time, if they are backsliding, you will backslide very soon. If they are sinful, you will be sinful very soon. If they are unrighteous, you will be unrighteous very soon. If they are forsaking the gospel, and they are not walking by the standard, and by the principle of the gospel, you will soon be like them. Be not deceived. Don't say, I can walk with them. I can talk with them. I can interact with them. I can reason with them. And still remain saved. And still remain sanctified. And still remain holy. And still remain constant in the character of Christ. You are deceiving yourself. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. If you want to keep good manners, you want to keep, uh, keep the Christian conduct, you want to keep the life of Christ, you want to keep a righteous, rapturable life, you will forsake those associations. And you'll forsake that kind of friendship. And you'll forsake the people that make you to hear the word of God and forget the word of God. They never apply the word of God to their lives. And they will steal the word of God and conviction away from you. Because evil communications corrupt good manners. And then in verse 34, awake, don't sleep. Awake, don't just lie down helpless. Awake, don't stay with those people who corrupt good manners and good communication. Awake to righteousness. And see not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. I pray will not allow evil communication, evil association, evil friendship, unequal yoke to corrupt our lives in Jesus' name. Look at First John chapter 3. We're reading from verse 5. We keep with Christ. And anyone, any association that does not 
live like Christ wants us to live, we abandon them. They're not our enemies. We're praying for them, but we'll not allow them to influence our conviction, our commitment, our conduct, our consecration. First John chapter 3, verse 5. And ye know that he, Christ, was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Verse 7, little children, young converts, growing believers, little children, members of the body of Christ, those who are genuinely saved, if your name is written in the book of life, if the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart that truly you are a child of God, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Even as he is consistently righteous, constantly righteous, happily righteous, courageously righteous. If you are a child of God, as he is righteous, you'll be constantly righteous, consistently righteous, courageously righteous. If you're not courageous, you'll be righteous because the majority of people in the world are not righteous. And if, if you are not courageous to stand your ground, you will so fall to their side. But he that doeth righteousness constantly, consistently, courageously, is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, it may brag, it may give job breaking testimony. I'm saved. I'm a member of the greatest church in town. And I'm very close to the greatest pastor minister in town. The life is what matters. The empty testimony that does not have the root of consistent Christian living. That empty testimony means nothing. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I pray every work of the devil in our lives be totally destroyed in Jesus' name. Ah, uh -uh, you see that? Amen now. Yeah. And then uh, in verse 9, uh, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why? He doesn't like to commit sin. He's born of God. The nature that loves, that desires sinning, that nature is taken away. And the fish does not have a desire to swim and the bird sorry the fish does not have a desire to fly because that's not his nature the bird does not have the desire to swim that's not his nature our nature has been changed we become new creatures in Christ and because we are born again and has given us the divine nature Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth, abideth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. That's you. Say, That's me. Say, That's me. The nature of God will make you victorious. 
every time in Jesus name verse 10 in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever whatever his title whosoever whatever his testimony whosoever whatever his personality whosoever whatever his long-standing membership whosoever does not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother we we'll come to point number three now and we're reading from first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 35 point number three the resurrection in revealed contrasts the resurrection in revealed contrasts first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 35 but some man will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come he said some people are ignorant of the power of God they will ask this resurrection they don't understand what illustration can you give look at verse 36 thou fool that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die he says when you look at what the farmers do they plant the seed bury it it dies and then it germinates it comes up that's similar to the resurrection we're talking about then it says in verse 37 it says that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be but bear grain it may chance of which are of some other grain verse 38 but God giveth each a body as it has pleased him and to every seed his own body he says when you sow that seed by the power of God and by the goodness of God the principle of life comes up and that seed is produced in multiplied fold he says it's exactly like that with the resurrection John chapter 12 reading from verse 24 John chapter 12 verse 24 but he lived very lesson unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die that death has to take place first before the resurrection except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abides alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he says that's an illustration revealed to back up the resurrection let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 39 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 39 of flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of man another flesh of beast another of fishes another of birds verse 40 there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial terrestrial earthly celestial heavenly but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the earthly terrestrial is another verse 41 there is one glory of the sun 
another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory is telling us about the different glory aspect height brightness splendor of the glory of the stars and it says that is the same as the resurrection then in verse 42 so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in in corruption verse 43 it is sown in this honor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power and then in verse 44 it tells us it is sown in natural body it is raised in spiritual body there is a natural body the body we have now that's the natural one and then there is a spiritual body that the body we will have at the time of the resurrection it will shine forth in glory it will be forth in glory in daniel chapter 12 verse 3 talking about those who rise from the dead the splendor the glory the shining forth and they that the wives shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness are the stars forever and ever i pray you'll be there in jesus name let's come back to first corinthians chapter 15 from verse 45 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam was made a quickening spirit verse 46 how be it that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural that first the first adam that first adam with the human nature and with the body that is mortal the body that is prone to death and prone to weakness he said that's not spiritual but then christ the last adam as he comes and he comes with life and he comes with a resurrection power a quickening power and as we believe on him and attach ourselves to him the power of the resurrection will work mightily in our lives in jesus name how be it that was not forced which is spiritual that which is natural and afterward after death and resurrection that which is spiritual that's 47 the first man is of the earth earthy the second man christ is the lord from heaven verse 48 as is the earthy such are they also that are earthly earthy mortal and as the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly verse 49 and uh, as we are born uh, the image of the earthy we shall also bear the image of the heavenly christ is coming 
And when he comes, his kind of body is the kind of body we are going to have. Power, that's what we are going to have. And the ultimate power that that body will lose the ability to catch sickness or to be firm, but will have a glorious body, celestial body, that will be yours and mine and ours in Jesus' name. Will bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Our time will come. Today we we'll rise spiritually and then when it comes we are going to rise with glorified body like him also in Jesus name. Spiritually now we are alive and then the resurrection body we are going to possess at that time. Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 1 in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God it says we risen with Christ spiritually now he died or died with him. He was buried. Were buried with him. And then he rose again. Spiritually. Were rise with him. And it says. If ye then be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth. On the hand of God. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Then in verse 3, for ye are dead and your life is seen with Christ in God. Now it's going to talk about the resurrection, verse 4. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory i will be there i said i will be there when the saints go marching in after the dead in christ are risen and then the saints of god are raptured, and we have that glorious body you will have that same glorious body in jesus name when Christ with our life shall appear then shall you also appear with him in glory I pray you will not miss that event in Jesus name First John chapter 3 verse 1 First John chapter 3 Verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, Beloved, now I was the sons of God. Thank God, we're sons of God. 
and we shall rise with him. And we shall be like him. We are going to rise up and tell the Lord, I want to be there on that day. Tell the Lord, tell that person. Commit yourself into the hand. The first authorized biography of the founder of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is finally out. Kumuyi, defender of the faith. Detailing his early years, his conversion, his call, his conviction, his exploits in ministry, his journey from then until now. Read the first hand account of people who witnessed each event. Find out his vision, his mission, his passion and the reasoning behind his actions. In the book, Kumuyi, Defender of the Faith, find out the story behind monumental moments of Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, moments that are now forever act in history, with forward written by Pastor E. A. Adeboe of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. This is the book the world has been waiting for. Kumuyi, Defender of the Faith, coming soon in all leading bookstores. Watch out.